Welcome back to Fossil Linux Journal, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you back. Fedora is celebrating a milestone. Fedora 40 is the jubilarian and kicks off this year. In this video, we take a closer look at Fedora 40 and what it has in store. Spoiler, GNOME Shell 46, etc. But one thing at a time. And now I would say, let's get started. Most of you are probably familiar with Fedora. For those who are new to it, here's a short briefing. Fedora is a Linux distribution that emerged from Red Hat Cosmos. It is even part of the Red Hat value chain and is regarded there as a kind of a development environment. This means that the latest available technology is always packed into Fedora with the aim of testing it. The path then continues to the Linux distribution CentOS until the packages end up in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL for short, at later date. RHEL is the Linux server solution from Red Hat and one of the main foundations at Red Hat. But don't get a wrong frame of the words development environment. This is not to be understood as an experimental solution for crash test dummies. Rather, new packages are tested for function, stability and compatibility. A lot of time will pass before these packages end up in RHEL and not everything will arrive anyway. For users, Fedora therefore always offers a passable and up-to-date distro that releases a new version every six months. So if you are not completely convinced by rolling Linux distributions, but also not convinced by Debian or Ubuntu due to the LTS philosophy, you can find exactly the right niche here. In addition to the Workstation Edition, Fedora also offers the following other editions. Fedora Server as a Community Server Operating System, Fedora IoT as an open source platform for Internet of Things ecosystems, Fedora Cloud as a minimal OS for public and private cloud environments, Fedora Core OS as a minimal and container focused OS, Fedora Spins with other interfaces such as KDE Plasma or Cinnamon, and last but not least, Atomic Desktops unchangeable operating systems with different desktops. Before we get a little bit more technical, a few words about the Atomic Desktops. Behind this is Fedora Silverblue. This is an unchangeable operating system structure in which the user only has access to the desktop layer. The core OS, for instance the basic operating system, is protected against manual changes. Changes are only made via automated updates, which can also be rolled back if desired if the result is not satisfactory. In other words, if an update crashes and breaks the system, you can roll back to the last stable version within a few minutes. Fedora Silverblue has received a lot of attention within the project recently and is now more or less ready to replace the classic workstation and spins. But this is at the moment not official, but I assume that the change will start slowly in the near future. Not overnight, but gently and slowly. If you are not so familiar with Fedora Silverblue, have a look at my test of Fedora Silverblue after this video. It is an interesting approach, but not necessarily suitable for everyone. The link is in the description below. Fedora is an interesting positioning in the broad spectrum of Linux distributions. It's a semi roll distribution that always offers up-to-date and new packages and software despite the classic point release model. This puts Fedora skillfully between the stable LTS distributions such as Debian or Ubuntu and rolling distributions such as Arch, Solus or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. If you are considering installing Fedora 40, you should keep an eye on the system requirements. The minimum requirements are an Intel AMD or ARM processor, 4 GB of RAM and at least 40 GB of free hard disk space. Compared to Fedora 39, the values have increased, but not disproportionately so. However, if you want to enjoy the full GNOME experience, I recommend 16GB of RAM to ensure a smooth performance. What is the target group? Whether you're a seasoned Linux user or just dipping your toes into the world of Fedora, Fedora 40 presents itself as a powerful and reliable operating system that fulfills all desktop requirements. 
With its modern architecture, comprehensive hardware support and innovative features, Fedora is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable Linux distributions on the market. Especially for developers who always need the latest interfaces and APIs, Fedora offers an ideal compromise between stability and up-to-dateness. And now let's get through the new features of Fedora 40. Linux kernel 6.8 as its core, Fedora 40 is powered by Linux kernel 6.8, which was released on 10 of March. This is the latest mainline kernel at the current time. Therefore, you can expect the latest features and hardware updates with this release. If you are using a newer processor, graphic card or other hardware, kernel 6.8 could just be the kernel for you. GNOME 46 the Workstation Edition of Fedora 40 comes with GNOME 46. GNOME 46 is based on GTK 4.13 and Libitwriter 1.4.2. Most of the changes in GNOME Shell 46 are under the hood updates that focus on bug fixes and performance improvements. One of the major new features that Nautilus introduces as a part of GNOME 46 fixes a long-standing performance problem when switching views, for example, from list to grid. Every time you change the view, Nautilus tries to reload the entire directory. In addition, the search function of Nautilus gets a complete overhaul. Search in current folder replaces the original search button and continues to focus on finding files in the currently displayed directory. Global search is a brand new button that has been added to the left pane and allow you to search for the desired file directly in the entire file system. DNF5. The next version of the DNF package manager, DNF5, aims to improve performance and reduce memory and disk space compared to DNF. Although the switch to DNF5 was originally planned for Fedora 39, it has been postponed to a later release, likely Fedora 41. The team still plans to use DNF5 for the build of Fedora temporarily, starting with the package management features required for build routes in Mach. This approach will enable large-scale testing of DNF5 stability and performance, providing valuable data for future development. In addition, DNF will no longer download file lists by default to reduce download size and increase performance and user satisfaction. Change in the directory structure. About 10 years ago, the location of the system's runtime files were changed from slash var slash run to slash run. However, the old structure was retained in the correct slash run directory was used by means of a file equivalence function. This approach can cause confusion for system administrators as they are unsure which path to use. To solve this problem, the Fedora team recently moved the SE Linux policy entries from slash var slash run to slash run, thus removing the technical legacy. Atomic desktops. From the Fedora 40 release, the term immutable will no longer be used for the spins and will instead be replaced by atomic desktops. This represents a realignment of the Fedora spins which have been reorganized for marketing reasons. In addition to the eye-catching rebranding, the names of some spins have also been changed to better reflect the future concept of more Fedora spins with Atomacy. The new Fedora atomic desktops are Fedora Silver Blue with GNOME Desktop, Fedora Kinoid with KDE Plasma Desktop, Fedora Sway Atomic with Sway Window Manager, Fedora Budgie Atomic with Budgie Desktop. If you are now keen on Fedora, you can either go to a head shop or watch my Fedora Linux installation video. All the relevant things are shown there. For insiders, I show the installation so that you can savor the ButterFS subvolumes and use snapshots in the new system afterwards. So it's worth taking a look if you want to get started with Fedora. Here we continue now with the performance. Let's check the performance values firstly. My Fedora 40 workstation system was clawing 11 GB of the disk. The amount of memory consumption was 1.4 GB and a total of 1964 RPM packages are pre-installed. If we look briefly at the predecessor, Fedora 39, the disk space requirements there was 8.3 GB. The system required 1.8 GB of memory and came with 1915 pre-installed RPM packages. So two or three values have risen. Whether this is a drama or not is up to you to decide. I just take note of it. 
At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 46.0 was delivered. With regard to the desktop concept offered, the keyword at Fedora is Vanilla GNOME. GNOME is delivered in its basic form without any additional customization. Unlike Ubuntu for example, Fedora wants to be perceived as universal. The customization is left to the users. The result is a simple desktop without a bar at the bottom or the left edge and without desktop icons. Instead there is a bar on the top which opens the activity overview by clicking on the bar here. It seems that Fedora users get well on this, either because they prefer vanilla GNOME or because they have been using their own extensions for a long time and take their desktop with them from upgrade to upgrade. Vanilla GNOME relies heavily on keyboard shortcuts and multi-touch gestures. If you don't like this, there are GNOME extensions that can be added via the extension manager. Just open the software center, type on extension, And then I recommend you to install this extension manager. I don't know why the thumbnail is now not available. And not this, because this is a third party app that has the function to search for extensions and upgrade them as well. The other is only able to activate or deactivate the extensions and you have to install them manually by yourself. So the extension manager gives you more comfort. I just recommend to install it and then search your preferred extensions and install them. Boom, done. And if you don't like the window design either, the GNOME Tweak tool, which you can also find in the App Center under Optimization, offers you a solution. I already installed it and let's open it. And for instance, if you are not satisfied with this title bar button, then you can add Maximize and Minimize as well and you can also change the position left or right. I will now undo my changes. So customization options are available. And now let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.8. As browser there's Firefox, as email client there's nothing pre-installed, as office package there's LibreOffice and as software container we have Flatpak. Fedora relies on a minimalistic software stack which has proven itself over many versions. The basic idea is clear. The operating system offers the essentials and the users decide for themselves which other apps they want to install. The GNOME Software Center serves as a central point of contact and offers a wide range of applications for everyday use. Thanks to the integrated software container format, not only the standard RPM package apps are available, but also numerous additional apps including proprietary applications such as Spotify, Zoom, Slack, Visual Studio or Microsoft Edge for instance. In the last Fedora 39 video I told you about postponement of DNF5 and Web UI installer to version 40. Unfortunately Fedora 40 will not include the DNF5 package manager which provides faster package management nor the Akanta Web UI installer for Fedora Workstation Edition. Both features have been postponed to a future release probably for Fedora 41 we'll see in October. Is it just me or is Fedora becoming more and more bloated? More and more releases, versions and editions? If you feel the same way, please write it in the comments. I think it's getting a bit confusing at the moment with all the editions and codenames. I'm also curious to see whether the Red Hat paywall issue will have any effect on Fedora's reputation. In other words, whether users have migrated or not. It would be interesting to get some measures here. But it could also be that it just was a lot of excitement and then in the end it's just all <laughs> hot air. I could imagine that the Fedora developers are the wrong guys to address this issue because they didn't influence the decision. But on the other hand you don't know whether there will be changes for Fedora or not in future. Another thing I noticed is that LibreOffice is included as an RPM package and not as a flatpak container. In mid-2023 Red Hat decided to stop maintaining RPM packages for LibreOffice for new versions and recommend a flatpak version. This decision should also have an impact on Fedora. For version 40 it either did not arrive yet or the Fedora developers were able to find another solution. 
The final version has been scheduled for 23 April 2024. The Fedora project always reserves a certain buffer. The earliest possible date was 16 of April 2024, but the previous versions were sometimes delayed by weeks. However, as I want to be on time, this video will be published on the planned release date. Now it's up to the Fedora developers to catch up. After the release of Fedora 40, it will be maintained for about 13 months. This means that if you are using Fedora 39 now, you can upgrade soon, and if you are using Fedora 38, you have just under a month to upgrade. Now let's come to my conclusion. In addition to technical improvements under the bonnet, Fedora 40 also offers software updates and new applications. The updated GNOME desktop allows intuitive operation, while applications such as LibreOffice, Firefox and GIMP are included in the latest versions. Fedora 40 represents the continued development and innovation of the Fedora project with a focus on performance, security and ease of use. It is a significant step in the history of this Linux operating system. The postponement of DNF5 and WebUI installer are unattractive but bearable in my eyes. It is important that the distro runs reliably and don't degenerate it to an unstable distribution. For this reason, I can well understand the project's decision to postpone these two topics again. I would not recommend Fedora for Linux newcomers. It does not focus on its target group, so you should be aware of that. However, if you are not fully satisfied with Debian, Ubuntu or Arch as mentioned in detail and would like newer packages but not rolling, you can take a look at Fedora. I used Fedora as my main distro for about half a year. But then I decided to go back to a classic LTS distro because I was getting too many updates every day. In case of you are wondering which LTS distro, it was Ubuntu. Yes, Ubuntu. For a simple reason. Theme, design and HWE stacks from time to time are exactly what I expect from a modern Linux desktop. But that's just my view on things. Now I'm interested in your view of things before we slowly come to the end of the video. What impression did Fedora 40 leave on you? Could it be something for you or would you prefer LTS or a rolling distro? Please let me know in the comments. If you like watching Linux content, please leave your channel subscription, give the video a thumbs up and activate the bell, then you'll soon receive information about new content on this channel. Thank you for the kind attention ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.